Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. In this daily editorial, I'm getting an update from Trigon Metals, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol TM, and on the OTC markets under the symbol PNTZF. I am chatting again with the CEO, Jed Richardson. Now, Trigon Metals uh, has a couple assets. One, the combat mine in Namibia. This mine, last time we chatted, is was temporarily paused as the company is going back through uh, kind of a mine restart plan, something that we will get Jed to elaborate on. company also holds the Silver Hill Project in Morocco, which I understand uh, is on tap for some drilling coming up in the relatively near term. Now, Jed, first things first, let's recap the most recent news release that came out October 24th. You announced the closing of a Silver Stream deal with Sprott Streaming. The important aspect of this closing, first of all, is bringing in this money, but it was also increased by $10 million. So the total amount of this streaming deal, now $37.5 million. Jed, uh, take us through uh, what happened here. Why the increase of $10 million in this Silver Stream, please? So yeah, we increased the silver stream in order to make sure we have all the capital necessary to get into our underground. And that was now repaying of some debt. So we repaid uh, five and a half million Canadian of debt. And we also have to fund our operations and working capital uh, uh, for the open pit restart that we're looking forward to in April of next year. Uh, so yeah, we increased the increased the deal, so we had capital for that as well. So we've got debt repayment, we've got restart for the open pit, and now we also have, and then our our focus, which was the capital for the for the underground startup. Okay, now some of the moving parts within this deal too are, are interesting. You do have the option of buying back fifty percent of this stream by paying Sprott Streaming 1.5 times the advance payment for the portion of the stream to be brought back. This does expire at the end of June in 2027, though. So you do have some time on this aspect of the stream. How did this come together? This is a bit of a unique deal when it comes to a stream and being able to buy back half of it. So, yeah, this was something we actually proposed, put this out to a number of groups, and Sprott was the only only group that came back and said, okay, they, they would work with us. And it's an optionality that we wanted to keep because we know that, that there's a lot of exploration upside here at combat. And frankly, we're, we're also still bullish on silver, right? Um, so this gives us an opportunity at a fixed price now to buy back that optionality for, for us and our shareholders. Uh, I think it's a really neat feature to the deal. Now, one of the other moving parts to accommodate for this extra $10 million is on top of this streaming deal, which takes the silver production from the combat mine, there is also a small copper component then, which is the primary asset within this mine. How does that work through this deal? So the copper component really was the cost of that extra $10 million. So it's for the life of the life of the mine, it'll be 1.625% of the copper that will be part of the stream. Way this works is actually initially when we start, it is um, it, it is zero. So from the open pit, uh, there will be no copper paid. It will only be the silver. But then when we do our first phase of underground development, we actually go up to six and a half percent at that at that juncture. And then it's incumbent on us to work hard, get that second phase started and then it drops down to the long-term average and that was something that was put in the deal really because sprout streaming is not only giving us value for the resource that we have but they're also looking forward to that assets far west our second stage of underground where we don't yet have a defined resource so they included value for that and in order to uh, to kind of cover their risk side we have the um, the elevated copper portion while we're just per, uh, just producing from uh, from the first phase of the underground. 
All right, Jed, let's talk about what the mine restart process looks like then here. Take us through what steps still need to happen, general time frame around those two, if possible. Sure. For your listeners who've been following along, when we worked earlier in this year, we made that pause uh, really to focus on getting larger, more tabular bodies of, uh, of mineralized resource and higher grade. So that is the focus of our work right now. We're drilling, we're drilling our, uh, the combat trend mineralization. Uh, we've been steadily putting out results. You, you've probably seen some of them where we're getting uh, 10 meters at 1.7% uh, at 56 meters depth or four meters at 7.7%. We're, we're getting solid, solid intercepts, larger, larger widths of higher grade mineralization. And that's, the focus. So we will continue to do that drilling over the balance of this year. And then come next year, we'll work on a new resource and mine plan from the open pit. And that will be where we, where we start our mining in, uh, in April of next year. So already you've seen some of those re results that are uh, right on, along our expectation, in many cases exceeding our expectations. And then you'll continue to see that. And uh, you want to see solid widths, good grades, and also that we're um, that we're that we're getting sulfide mineralization. So you'll see in those press releases where um, we are we're, we're actually including a lot of pictures of the ore, so that you so that our shareholders can follow along and see that we're getting uh, the metallic looking sulfide mineralization as opposed to kind of the fuzzy green oxides that were uh, a problem for us in the central pit earlier this year. Okay, this ties into a September 15th news release that had some drill results from the combat mine, talked about a new zone that was identified. Can you simplify again, just for listeners getting up to speed on this story, these different zones and where the true focus is going to be as you move back into this restart mode? Yeah, so we moved from the central pit to what we're calling the Kavango pit and East 400. So th that's the drilling that we're drill that you'll see right now. You'll also see some drilling in East 600 and East 900. These are all along the combat trend. And you'll see, if you follow in the press releases, you'll see the images showing the two trends. Uh, the nature of the mineralization is different between the two trends. And, um, uh, so now we're focused on that combat trend, and that's where where all the new resource will be will be built out. Okay, perfect. Now it still might be a little bit too early to tell just how much this will cost for the restart. But considering this thirty seven and a half million for this streaming deal, are you estimating that that will be able to cover the cost of the restart? It'll cover the cost of the open pit restart and getting underground. So yes, yeah, we're we're pretty comfortable that we've got the capital now for all of that. Okay, hey, that's important in these markets. So good job, I guess, bringing in that extra ten million dollars. Let's also get an update from the Silver Hill property in Morocco. As I mentioned, it sounds like you guys want to be drilling here relatively soon. What's the strategy in Morocco at Silver Hill? This is going to be a really interesting part of the Trigon story over the next few months. We did some uh, induced polarization or um, some geophysics of chart. So this is chargeability surveys. And we quickly saw that um, where we had our success in our past programs showed up on our survey. But there's actually more interesting targets to the south and to the east of where we where where we've we've been drilling. So over the next few months, we will drill four key targets along uh, along the trend in in Silver Hill, testing these really strong chargeability anomalies. They extend over over four kilometers. Uh, looks like some this we could have some some really flashy results from here. So I'm I'm pretty excited about that. We'll make a big announcement when that drilling gets gets going, and uh, but look out for look out for the drill results when they do come out. Okay, perfect. So it sounds like a couple assets that are going to be worked on here. Most importantly, though, I think also that moving forward with that restart of the combat mine still need to get through a couple drilling aspects and a few more news events. 
just summarize if you could for us then, Jed, what investors should be looking for news flow wise as we progress through really the last two months of this year and then into next year. Yeah. So as we as we close out uh, 2022, it will be really drilling. So drilling coming from initially combat, and then we'll have drilling coming out of Morocco at Silver Hill. Then getting into the new year, we'll be looking at a new resource coming out at combat for the open pit. We'll have the restart coming in uh, in April of 2023. Then we'll you'll see an updated feasibility study coming from um, from the underground at combat towards the towards the end of Q2. So uh, there's a lot of a lot of meaningful information coming out over the next next few months. All right, Jed, appreciate this update. I'll post a link to the Trigon website and the news area so everyone can read over the recent news releases. And as always, please email me with any questions you have for Jed regarding either the combat mine or the Silver Hill property. Happy to get those addressed for you, and I will be following up as more news comes out of Trigon Metals. Jed, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate the update. Thanks, Corey.